Okay, before things start off, I'll just address the elephant in the room. Firstly, this is a lot more different than the setup I'm used to. Secondly, it's a very awkward setup in that I have a tripod right over here in the middle of a table like pointing downwards and my mic is on the left over here so I kind of have to like I'm situated to the left and also I have to like wrap my arms to the right so forgive me if my motions look a bit weird but today though I was very kind enough to receive uh, two things a controller and a keyboard from Monka or rather specifically Marvo from their Monka line so today we're gonna have a look at the Marvo Monka controller as well as the KG991W Marvo Monka keyboard. First off, let's go with the controller because I feel like that is the, the easier one to review. This is the Marvo Monka controller. It is a PS4 wireless gaming controller, but also it does work on PCs as well as Android and iOS. Now, I do not have a PlayStation. Uh, I'd love to be sent one, but I can only test this for the PC. However, I will say, just off of visuals alone, I am a big fan of the red, white, and black aesthetic, especially with this little, I don't know what you would call this, but it's like promotional art. They should make this like a keyboard, uh, not a keyboard, a mouse pad. Like this is mouse pad worthy. But this is just the, the opening. And inside we have a little, what is this? Let's see, a little red packet. Is there gonna be money in here? Ooh. No, it is in fact the uh, safety guidelines which I will absolutely read. Or at least you guys will read and you'll tell me if I do anything wrong. Otherwise, we have this box here, which I assume is the USB-C cable because this is, of course, wireless for PlayStation. However, if you want to connect it to a PC, you do have to use a USB-C cable. Otherwise, for the controller, let's get that out. We have what looks to be a fairly standard looking PlayStation controller. It has all of the face buttons, you know, the... They were, it's not the... <laughs> the X squared triangle circle, it's a 3D now. It's a cross, it's a cube, it's a pyramid, and it is a cylinder. Uh, it has a textured back, so I don't know if you can see this here, but it does have a very textured back. Uh, the analog sticks also have a textured edge on the outside, a good D-pad. Yeah, there is a bit of a texture on the trigger buttons as well. They do have that classic PlayStation shape as well. And it does have a trackpad. Now again, I don't have a PlayStation, so I cannot test this, but I do know that the gyro function does work on this controller. However, because this is registered as a direct input in a PC when you can plug it in with their USB-C, it acts like an Xbox controller. So the buttons will be Xbox style and also there's no gyro function natively on a PC. You can, if you download a third party software, sort of jerry-rig the gyro back into this controller on a PC. But again, it, it's out of the scope of this. It requires external stuff. It requires extra effort. As It's not as simple as plug and play. However, speaking of plug and play, let's do that. So as you can see, once plugged in, it has, of course, the classic RGB lighting as all third-party controllers would have. It does also have a turbo button. And on the back, you'll see there is a light button. This is how you change the, the lighting features. So if I hold the light button in and press the right analog stick, you'll see it is now currently like vib not vibrating. Uh, going through a cycle of colors, but if I press this, it now becomes a solid blue. Press it again, and it has this breathing effect. Press it again, and it comes back to the wavy pattern. Otherwise, though, like I said, it's a controller. It's kind of difficult to get wrong. It does everything it needs to do. It, the buttons are all very responsive. They work. They're very clicky. They, they don't stick at all. Uh, I'll put in some background gameplay of me playing the brand new Hollow X Break. Probably not the best showcase of a controller, but it's, it's something that I've been playing a bit, so it's something that I would have enjoyed playing anyway with this controller. Otherwise, though, again, I mean, it's, it's the common scenario, right? If you are looking for a PlayStation controller, this is a very nice alternative for, you know, actual first-party controller. It gets the job done, it works, and also you can plug it into your PC, which, I mean, I, I assume most PlayStation controllers could anyway, but it's a nice added benefit. Also, another kind of interesting quirk about this controller is that even though it is a definitely a PlayStation style controller, right? It has a touchpad, it has a gyro. It does have the sort of Xbox or I guess Switch as well layout of the analog sticks. So this is also if you for some reason want a Xbox style analog controller for your PlayStation, this is also another great option. All right, though, moving on to the keyboard, which I will say I have much stronger opinions about. This is the KG991W. And, I mean, you can see it right here from the start. There's a lot that sort of jumps out at you. One, firstly, again, the very nice color scheme. Red, white, and black, always good. 
So first you try mode mechanical gaming keyboard. That means you can either plug it in via USB connection uh, wire. You can either plug it in or not plug it in. You have a dongle that you can use or you have three different Bluetooth channels that you can use. The other big thing that probably jumps out at you is that it has a screen built into the keyboard. That's probably for me at least one of the cooler features. I'll get into that in a bit though. For now, let's open this bad boy up. And once again, like, you have a you have mouse pad right here. Just print this as is on a like mouse pad e material, and there you go. You have a new product as well. Monka or Marvo, you're welcome. I'm giving you this idea for free. Otherwise, though, first things first. This is again assume the cable, and also I think there is the keycap remover. Speaking of keycaps, they do not have a distinct uh, or a named brand. Here is the keyboard itself, but if I'm not mistaken, there is going to be a. Hang on a minute, something is missing here. Ah, there it is. More importantly than the keyboard though. Red packet. Safety instructions. Very important for you to read, not for me though. Otherwise, here is your keyboard. Now, again, aside from the screen and the, the striking color theme, one thing you'll notice is the, the layout. It is kind of like a full keyboard in that it has the numpad, but it's also squashed and it doesn't have that, that singular row where you would normally have insert, delete, home, end, scram, page up, page down, but they are sort of rearranged up here in the top. So it, it's a weird hybrid of a smaller compact keyboard, but also a full-size keyboard because you do have the arrow keys that are squashed in here now. So when I've been typing with this, I've had multiple times where I'm used to a full-size keyboard and either I'm going to hit a zero when I'm typing in numbers and I accidentally hit the right arrow key because I'd expect the zero to be a bit wider or I'm typing and I expect to hit shift here just below the enter and I press up or I press control and I end up pressing these arrow keys. It's It, it takes a while to get used to, but you do get used to it. The one other weird thing was the scroll wheel or the, the volume scroll wheel. I have one on my regular keyboard that I used to use as well. And this one, it's inverted. So for the volume up, on my regular keyboard, you would think scroll upwards, whereas here it is scroll downwards for volume up and scroll upwards for volume down. On the back, it does have two little backrests that have uh, different varying degrees of, of adjustment. So you can either have a big or a little adjustment here. I'll go flat for today. And uh, oh, also there is also the little wireless dongle over here. We'll use that now to plug in our keyboard. Let me also go ahead and show off the keycaps so you guys can see. Again, it is not uh, a Descript Cherry MX brand, but it is most likely a Cherry MX Red pseudo keycap. But good news though, if you do not like these keycaps for whatever reason, you can always change these switches out and replace them with your own switch. So as you can see there, it is a nondescript, what looks to be a Cherry MX Red because there's no tactile function. It's all linear and it's very uh, quiet. As for the functionality of the keyboard, let's turn it on. And I mean, it's, you know, a keyboard. It, it types <laughs> again. In the functionality, there's not really much you can go off of that. So I've already started up the keyboard a bit and there are different functions. So you can actually see that now on the little screen here. So initially you have the time being shown here as well as the different functions or sort of uh, operations. So for example, caps lock, num lock and whatnot, scroll lock as well are all shown here. But my one pet peeve is that there's just so much extra space wasted over here. These three things, the num lock, caps lock and um, the windows lock function essentially, are all shown on the screen as well. So they're kind of doubling up here, but that's okay because maybe you don't want to look at the menu screen there the whole time. What they do have is if you hold function and the left and right arrow keys, you can change to different stuff. So first up you have the menus. So here you can change the connectivity style. So function enter to enter, which one you want, where you're using wireless. You can hit function and either Q, W, E, R or T to change the connectivity as well. Otherwise you also have the layout function, which is for USB or Mac. You have different effects here. So this is essentially your lighting effect. So I currently have it as a solid color, but you have other stuff like the uh, lighting as you type, flashy colors, uh, you have a bunch of different things, right? I'll go back to my standard one though of a solid color. You can also change the exact color as well. So I had it as a nice light blue, but you can change it to whatever color you want. Now I will say, actually, I'll, 
I'll get to it in a bit. Uh, there is a software that you can download that gives you more customization for these colors. But I want to bring up the software a bit later for something more important, in my opinion. Next up, you have the brightness. This is all, by the way, you don't need to use the function and the screen. There are other ways where you can control it with function and other buttons. The speed as well of the changes. So of course, again, you have volume, then you have language. The only languages available are English and Chinese. So hopefully you understand one of these two or you're at least following along with this video to know what is going on. And then last but not least is you have this sort of promotional image here of that same girl who is on the soon to be mouse pad from Monka or Marvel specifically. Again, it's Marvel, but this is the Monka series. Now, here's the thing I was mentioning about that software. In the software, you can change the lighting, you can set up macros and stuff like that. But more importantly, in the software, you can change what this image is. Well, the, technically speaking, this is a GIF, but you can make this any image you want. You can make it any series of images you want. You can, well, I guess that is a GIF. So you can make this anything you want on that display. There is no checks to see what is and is not allowed. After all, it's your own device. It, it in theory, is gonna be only seen to you. So whatever you want to put on that screen, you can do it. I have tested this out before and I decided to put it back to this promotional image because I don't think uh, it would have looked weird having my own personal image being shown there, or at least what I put on my, uh, what I used to put on this keyboard. Now, as mentioned, this seems to be a Cherry MX Red type of switch. So now we're going to see if it sounds like one too. And also again, reminder, I am in a very weird setup, so don't expect my typing speed to be that great. All right, but with my horrible typing aside though, I think, again, the keyboard and controller both, they function, they work, they're great. And for the price point that they are at, they're very nice. They're a budget sort of brand. And I think they do their job very well. Again, the only qualm is the funky orientation of the keyboard, but maybe, you know, maybe you're not like me. Maybe I'm just weird and I really like full-size keyboards. Maybe you're weird and you like these weird compact keyboards. Maybe you just want to put a, a very funny image on your keyboard. In that case, this is the keyboard for you. This keyboard and controller for their price range are, from what I see, very competitive, very great. They offer you just exactly what you would need for, I guess, a mechanical keyboard and a controller at these price ranges. And arguably, they are offering as much, if not more, than their competitors. Absolutely for the controller, like compared to, say, a first-party PlayStation controller. And again, for the keyboard, it comes down to really are you okay with the wonky layout? If so, then I would say this is a great keyboard. Otherwise though, thank you to Marvel for providing me with these lovely products. Until next time, bye bye.